tutorial for Microsoft Small Basic for Year 7. We'll work with this document here, which is where to find Small Basic. Small Basic, we open it up by clicking on the icon, and we're going to go through some basic turtle graphics, such as typing in turtle. This gives us the turtle. And once we've got the turtle, there's a number of things down here we can see that we can do with the turtle, such as move, etc. To access these methods, we type in full stop, and this comes up. Now I can scroll, scroll through this and look at the number of actions that are available to me now, or the methods. And there's a description here on them, and there's an example over here on the side. Move that over, an example on the side. How far it's used. Move takes a parameter. It's going to be a number. So I type in round bracket and I move 100 and I play. And so it moves 100. I end it by closing the window. I can get the turtle to turn. right or left, or I can get it to turn a number of degrees. I'm going to give it the angle, I'm going to turn 90. And I'm going to do this four times, and I can use copy and paste. Paste. And paste. Now we get the square. Annotate my code, giving it instructions by using an apostrophe when I put my name form on the code, and I can give it some comments as long as I use an apostrophe in front of it. Now I'll work my way through the sheet. Next thing I'll do, because I learned how to use a repeat loop, I can copy the code directly from the worksheet and paste it into the window. Once again, this is using an apostrophe, so it's commented up. It's telling me that I'm going to use a loop for i becomes 1 to 4, repeat turtle move 100, turtle turn right 90, and then end. I have to end the loop here. And the turtle draws a square. Loop sheet will then ask the pupils to use loops to create a triangle, hexagon, pentagon, and octagon, looping the appropriate number of times. After that, we look at the idea of subroutines. A subroutine instruction is the name. One, you can create a subroutine called sub and then give it a name, square. And then we have to end the subroutine. So at the end of our instruction, we have to end sub. So now we have to find a subroutine called square. But we need to call it. If we do this, nothing will happen because we haven't called the subroutine. To call it, we just type in square up here. It now appears, now that we've defined it. We type in our subroutine square, and the square runs. Subroutine allows us to record a set of instructions, give it a name, and then we can use it again and again. For instance, we can say for i becomes 0. 36 call will end our for, for loop and for and within this we 
draw the square and the circle dot turn ten degrees. And now a square. Rotate. have it half drawn and move slowly the circle. Once we have learned how to write a subroutine, this is writing the subroutine, and we've learned how to call the subroutine, this is calling the subroutine so that it runs. It will be an exercise for the people to triangle and an octagon and paste a code in to the worksheet they'll save in their user area. Afterwards we'll learn how to use variables to create a subroutine called poly and change the size. Here we have a variable and it's assigned the value size is assigned the value 100. Note the apostrophes here because these are comments. Here we call the subroutine and when we call the subroutine the program flow goes into sub poly and it repeats and it draws, it moves 100 and it turns 360 divided by the number of sides, 4, which gives us 90. And then it ends the for loop, then it ends the subroutine. We'll copy and paste this code in, and we'll run it. And we'll see that this code will once again draw a square. square because we've set the size to 4. If I set the number of size to 3, divided by 160 will be 120. Triangle. The worksheet will now ask the pupils to create a polygon and change the variables and using the snipping tool, get a screen capture of the shape and set it in here. So we're changing the size. The size is given. And here's the shape. We have to work out the number of sides. From this, now investigate getting sides from the user. So we use output code here and we get values for size and values for size. So let's pop this code in. Set the value for sides and size in the code. Now what we're going to do is going to use text window dot write line which will send the message enter number of size. Text window dot read will enter read whatever we put in and then we'll get the size. So if I run this and I get a window asking me to enter the number of sides. So I'll enter 6. That's asking me the size, and I'll put in 50. Okay, to summarize the key points, we have instructions such as turtle move 100 and turtle turn for comments. This tells the compiler they're not instructions. Therefore, they're not converted to machine code, ones and zeros. Something we use for i becomes 1 to 4. Then we give the instructions. Then we end the for. We have a subroutine instead of instructions with a name. A routine must be defined, such as sub square, then the instructions, and then the keyword end sub. And the routine must be called, so we have to put in our code square that calls the subroutine. We have identifier, also known as variables, which is basically a name. Identifiers can be assigned values. 
such as size equals 100 or size equals 4. These are the identifiers of variables. This is the value. We use the equal sign to assign it. Input and output to the screen. We use text window, dot right line, round brackets, and double quotes for to send a message to the screen. This is used to prompt use for input. And then we take the identifier, we use the equal sign to assign a value to it, and the value will be text window dot read line. This will assign whatever the user keys in for the file size. 